if you Google like uh, maternal leave effect on fertility rates, mm -hmm. uh, from what I say, just literally scrolling through, there are dozens of articles. It seems like a really clear cut answer. Of course, no one thing can fix everything. You have to try multiple things. And oftentimes these programs end up getting defunded too. Andrew Wilson from The Crucible takes on Vosh in a fiery debate that's impossible to ignore. The two go head to head over socialist policies and birth rates. But Vosh's points just don't hold Eld up. Andrew's sharp arguments leave Vosh scrambling. And by the end, Andrew is laughing at how easily he dismantled the discussion. This one's definitely worth watching. Let's For dive example, in. For uh, example, a whole bunch of the like paternity leave and like subsidy programs and a bunch of like healthcare stuff in like the UK and Sweden and other countries has been defunded from right wing governments. So even if there is a short term benefit, uh, it kind of gets cut out in the long term by the fact that there are people like Andrew who will gut those policies. Um, I, I think that if you care about preserving uh, uh, birth rates and making things better, like it's literally like you Google the study, this improves the thing. So like, yeah, you know, some pretty simple policy. I don't know right, why we'll, Andrew we'll, wants we'll, to keep mothers away from their children, but- you know, Well, what's, uh, what's, what's the what's most Andrew, interesting here is that this country Paul. that is cited, Norway, is on the decline in this birth rates. There is no reversal. He's lying to you again. What so he he's trying to, to do is he's trying to say that there are some policies which can mitigate the, the decline, which was already conceded to 15 times. He has not given us even a collection and I said this word, the word collection of policies even, which would actually have a reversal effect because all you can come up with is materialists throw fucking money at it. But every place that we've thrown money at it, there is no fucking reversal. They're still on the downward trend. The data shows this overwhelmingly. What he's doing is a red herring, typical red herring, and he filibustered for like five minutes it's to read this and still never actually showed us a reversal. Look at Norway stats for yourself. They're on the downward trend. Are they not, Bosch? Huh? Are Norway's birth rates not on the downward trend? The example you just used. The study said that it was improved because of the policy. And so, are so, there you, birth so rates? Do you, wait, can I can I actually answer his question? <laughs> it's so you do, unbelievable. So you do realize policies can be defunded and other things can change, right? Like this is again like saying like, oh man, dude, my health really improved when I took those antibiotics, but now my health has gone down and it's been like a month. What's happened? And it's like, whoa, you only took antibiotics twice and you haven't taken them at all for the so past So has the policy weeks. been removed? So, uh, well, in a lot of cases, it has been defunded. Well, in Norway. Over that. Has in it Norway, in Norway? I don't know about Norway specifically. Well, then why would you use this as an example for your because, example, stupid? Because you, uh, because you don't <laughs> seem to understand. I, I, know I don't. You don't actually you give up arguments. Wait, hang on. Stop, stop. Lush, oh, wait, I, can I get oh, a closer? Of course. You guys will both get closing statements. Wash, I Was totally that not understand. His closer? The, what? Was that not his closer? No. Wash, I totally understand the point you're trying to make. Uh, but uh, he did ask you a direct question about whether currently – uh, Norway's, uh, and by the way, paternity leave is still fully funded in Norway. If you're enjoying this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps subscribe to the channel. Yeah, Andrew, I'm happy to answer your question. question. Yes. The, the problem here, and he's aware of this, which is why he's he sounds like a giggling psychopath whenever he makes the bad points, is that no, you can never look at the Dude, effects of the policy the hands in your hair by, the whole by time. looking at a policy that was passed in 1990 and then going, oh, well, 30 years later, things are down again. What you try to do is check to see if there's an effect that can be correlated or better even yet, like demonstrated to be causatively associated with the policy in particular. For example, imagine if you were to take a look at like, um, hey, does having uh, does does Biden's uh, uh, child tax credits lower child poverty? If you go back to the uh, COVID pandemic, right, or the the COVID crisis, and you ask, "Hey, did this policy lower child poverty?" The answer is yes, it cut it in half. But now that's not an effect, and other things have happened. So it's like, oh, well, what happened? I thought it fixed child poverty. In reality, the standards that Andrew is setting for analyzing policy would not work and don't apply anywhere, which Watch. is why. These are, all, these are all fair points, but I still think you should answer his initial question. He doesn't do that. What, what is the, he doesn't what is the know question? how. The, the you don't even know what the fucking question is. Well, You're so hey, stupid, what, dude. <laughs> what is the question? I'm trying to help you, you don't me, even man. know the question. You're answering a question. You don't even know what it is. <laughs> Vosh comes off as one of those people who cares more about scoring quick wins than actually having a meaningful discussion. You've seen it before. Focusing on nitpicky details, tossing out little jabs, and acting like that somehow proves a point. Meanwhile, Andrew Wilson is just sitting back 
laughing and reminding him what the real topic is. It's easy to spot when someone's not debating in good faith. Instead of addressing the core argument, they're busy trying to rack up these small, insignificant victories. Vosh seems like he's playing for the short-term win instead of actually contributing to the bigger conversation. What's your take on this? Drop a comment below, hit that like button, and let's jump Partly, back into the debate. Is Norway's birth rate going down? Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, I think technically it's actually risen in the past couple of years. The last data point was from 2023 where they had um, uh, birth rates per 1,000 people. Is it on a downward 1. trend or not, Vosh? Trend based on what? Based on the fact that it keeps going down as part of a trend. Well, over the past five years, it's actually gone up. Hmm, so, curious. But the trend shows the it going oh, down. The what do the oh, Norway the analysts show? The cope. I, well, the trend of the past five years is that it's going up. Hmm, well, curious. let's take a look and even see if this I, trend Alex, is true. Alex, this is literally never going to end. I brought we, up we an do, article that proves every point I had. No, to it doesn't prove anything. We it's do. two and a half hours. You just hours read in. about. You just he read it. He doesn't care about kids. He doesn't care about God. Stop, stop. We do have to get into closing statements. We're two hours and a half in. You, Andrew, said you want to keep it to you no know, more than two hours. Boss, you said you want to wrap up at two hours and a half mark. So both of you guys want to wrap up. I promise you can make all the points you want in your closing statements. Uh, and, no, I, I, like, uh, I, I have will... to go. It's two and a half hours in. I thought it'd be two. Oh, shit. Um, do you have a minute or two to make a closing statement? I'll yeah, like quick, yeah, like quick, though. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um literally like you can google policies to help fertility rates oh bamo there are solutions um all of andrew the reason why he does like the psychotic laugh and the reason he's chain smoked like 20 cigs throughout the entirety of this conversation is because his only actual like prescription is that he's a fascist and that's it um he doesn't give a shit about anything he doesn't care about god he's not an orthodox he has no real beliefs um like most fascists he believes that the world is anti-empiricist that everyone else is just as slimy as he is in reality it's just him and he's alone he has severe interpersonal problems with others. He clearly can't get along with me, and I'm a very easy guy to like. Like, I don't know what to do when you pull up a book that says this policy works, and he's like, well, well, well. So, like, I think that if there's any resounding point to be made from him, it's uh, immense personal unlikability. Uh, and for me, it's a set of sensible policies that you can adopt if you care about uh, producing more children. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vosh. Uh, That's you my really rational quick, argument. You want to really quickly plug your channel before you go? Uh, I'm also Vosh. All right, cool. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. I thought this was a really good discussion. And, and I have my uh, closer yeah. now. Yeah, of course. I understand that uh, yeah. Bosch may not stick around for it, but yeah, yeah, as of as of 2022, there were a total of 51,480 newborns in Norway. This, that might sound like a lot, but it actually marks a drastic drop in the fertility rate within the country, and it's on the downward trend. This is according to Norway's own stats, as much as the Gish Gallup goes. But let's go, go back into this. Bosch was blown out on ethics. He had no argument there. All criticisms directed at me were equally directed at him. He said that I'm not an Orthodox Christian. He has no nothing to back that up whatsoever. It's just some declarative statement that he makes up. He's called me a fascist, but when we were trying to go through that, he ran from it as fast as he possibly could, tried to filibuster the time as much as he could. He also, at the start of this, remember, said the birth rate itself is no problem. It's no issue. It's not even anything you got to worry about. By the end of the debate, he's scrambling desperately because his logic led him to notate this one key point. If the immigrant countries also have a below average birth rate, this is Vashon's words, you're not going to be able to migrate them anymore. We have a big problem. He said that himself. So finally, we get to the concession. This is an issue. When I ask him, what is your solution to this? Which I would have been happy to give mine. Instead, he says something mild like, we'll throw some fucking money at it. And hopefully, even though that does a small mitigation to the problem, but does not reverse the trend, we will continue on this evermore, throwing materialism at this, even though it has done absolutely nothing in any of these Western nations to uh, reverse the trend whatsoever. Uh, in fact, I would also say Vosh is literally one of the most bad faith opponents I've ever debated with. Uh, but I'm actually fine with that. I don't, I don't really care that much because his arguments weren't very good. <laughs> so ultimately all he had was you're mean and a fascist and hard to get along with. I've gotten along with Vosh fine for a year. He's been on the crucible multiple times, never had a bad engagement with him behind the scenes, total fabrication and bullshit there as well. Not a single problem with the guy behind the scenes. He says, I have issues with interpersonal relationships, yet he's come on my show multiple times without any of these interpersonal relationships. 
What this is, it's just typical over talkifying, right? The model allowed way too much of that. That's his show. I can't say anything about that. But my arguments were far better. And he never did make an actual demonstration for why I was wrong about any singular point. You can point tell that a I... lot about someone by the way they speak and handle themselves in a debate. When Vosh starts throwing out insults and labels like fascist or you just think this or that, it's clear he's more focused on discrediting Andrew Wilson personally than actually addressing his arguments. It's a common tactic from the far left playbook, gaslighting, dismissing the other side, and using labels to avoid engaging with the real points being made. On the other hand, Andrew Wilson stays calm and collected. He doesn't stoop to personal attacks or get rattled by Vosh's attempts to undermine him. Instead, he sticks to the facts, points out the flaws in Vosh's arguments, and holds his ground. That level-headedness shows confidence in his position, while Vosh's dismissive tone gives away his lack of solid counterpoints. When someone has a strong argument, they don't need to rely on cheap tactics. They let the evidence speak for itself. But when you see someone scrambling to insult or distract, it's usually because they know their case isn't as strong as they'd like it to be. That's exactly what happened here. In my opinion, Andrew Wilson clearly came out on top in this debate. His arguments were stronger, his composure was steady, and he effectively highlighted real-world issues like declining population trends. Vosh, on the other hand, seemed more interested in scoring quick points than offering meaningful solutions. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this breakdown.